Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. You take a look over here, tfnn.com. We're going to go over here to the newsletters tab and take a look at that first row. We have the Mastering Probability newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Now, this is a fantastic newsletter, and I sing its praises often when I'm on here interviewing Steve. It is uh, very in-depth. There's a lot to dig into. Uh, it just covers a lot. So if you're looking for something like that, this is the newsletter that you should try. Now, if it's your first time subscribing, if for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on all of our newsletters here at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. Yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How did you guys fare with the storm that we had? Did it hit you at all? We uh, not really, you know, which yeah. is kind of nice. That uh, It was what's good about the storms, folks, for us on the East Coast is when they start coming in through the Gulf, which is what this one did. It sucks up all the humidity. Not all no, the there humidity. You go. <laughs> you know, we can never do that in Florida, but certainly sucked up a lot of it. So it was, it was pretty pleasant. But, uh, you know, there's well, another storm brewing, I'm sure of that. And there's a storm brewing in the markets. That's right. right? If we take if we take a look at uh, if we take a look at oil's performance today, gold's performance today, yeah. and silver's performance today, I would say that traders are preparing for some type of uh, international event, you know, something over in Israel uh, or what <laughs> have you. So we'll see. I mean, to me, that's the most logical thing. There's not a significant movement in the dollar or anything along those lines. So I, I, I put up that this really wasn't a part of the presentation, but I was listening to you during that first segment. I figured, you know, why don't we take a look at gold and see what it's doing? Because if we, so the, the upper left-hand portion, Jacob, is the daily time frame for the December contract. And the uh, blue dash, the blue lines are profile level. So, uh, and, and then we've got a uh, rising green lines and a descending yellow line. That's our uh, rising and falling price channel. So we can see that price is pretty close to a potential resistance level, that little falling price line. If price gets up above that, and if somebody were to say, well, what is it? I'd say it's probably about 2515 so if we see another $5, if gold is able to close above that, it should make a run for 25.37.70. That is the top of that daily profile. And we can see on a weekly time frame that 25.16 is the top of its profile as well. So our resistance band for gold is going to be between 25.16 and 25.37. If we close above 25.37, uh, it's probably that uh, larger A to B equals CD pattern. That gets us up to about 27.16. That's a quarterly time frame chart. And the A to B equals CD pattern shown in the bottom right. So I thought I would just share that with everyone. We're right up near resistance. This is not a time to really buy. But it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, any questions about about this, this chart? No, no, no. Keep going. Perfect. So let's do this here. Let's do – oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do slideshow from beginning. All right, we'll skip the blank chart. So what I thought we would do is take a look at the, uh, uh, the September is is a is a pivotal month typically, and the question is, will this September also be a pivotal month? Now this uh, Jacob, this is the 127 year seasonal cycle for the Dow, and I say it says to us, beware of September. How does Stevie come up with that? Well, first, if you just look at the very bottom right panel. It shows you the average return by month. So we can see here that February is a weak month, typically over 127-year cycle. May is typically a weak month, but September is the weak month of them all. That's the mother load, and we're coming into September. Here's the seasonal cycle. You can see that price would basically rally up into the first week of September and then make a move and either make a bottom at the end of September or mid-October. That's the typical 127-year seasonal cycle. Now, somebody might be saying to themselves, Stevie, 127 years, that's a lot of information. Like you said, the newsletter <laughs> includes a lot of information. That's right. And I would say you're right, but okay, so just to entertain that thought, let's go from 127 years, let's back it off 100 years, basically. So let's just go down to a 25-year seasonal cycle. And this, too, if you, again, if you go right to the bottom right, over the last 25 years, it suggests we've had problems in January, February, May, and June, and August, month we're in, but September is the worst of them all. And so here you can see that perhaps over the last 25 years, it's been more of a sideways-ish type consolidation before it really takes off to the downside into September. That's a 25-year cycle. Now, for those folks that are saying, Stevie, 25 years is still too much time, well, then we go and take a look at the 10-year cycle. Now, this 10-year seasonal cycle, it also says beware of September. So that's for February, March, August, but September is absolutely the worst performing month, you can see. But the other thing that I wanted to point out is that September can also be a bottom. In fact, over the course of the last 10 years, the bottom comes in in September, not in October. So what does that mean? Well, 
If we take a look at the most famous top uh, for September tops, it's going to be the 1929 top. These blue lines uh, mark uh, represent September, either tops or bottoms out there. And that's the interesting thing, because when we took a look at seasonal cycle, it's very easy, Jake, to look at that and say, boy, September is just going to be a top, but not necessarily, you know, where's the bottom? Mm -hmm. The red rectangles here show different bottoms that actually form. Now, this is going back, I'm, uh, this is going back to 1897. All right. So, you know, this just takes us from 1897 to about 34. But I, I pretty much stopped in uh, 1929 out there. So September can be a month where we see a significant top or a significant bottom. And I think that's a very likely outcome in the market that we're currently in. Jacob, these are referred to as primary trading range lines, these horizontal lane, uh, lines out here. Uh, I refer to them as horse, just simply horizontal trading ranges. Uh, Bud Rolfs, uh, who used to be with uh, TFN decades ago, was the one that, to my knowledge, created these horizontal lines. And what he did was he identified the largest number of co-located opens or closes of the body of a candle. So it didn't matter whether it was an open or a close. And then uh, now my, my system, I, I automated the system, so it picks out exactly where those horizontal trading ranges be. Once you identify the largest number of co-located opens and closes, that's going to give you your range. Of, of uh, then once you figure out that initial range, you just have that same dollar value, and that's why all this looks pretty equal. Well, if we take a look at the month of August, we're just trading in between the trading range between 39, 38, 325, and 41, 435. So nothing is broken here. Now we can take that same monthly data. This is a monthly chart we're looking at, and we can put in the rising price channels for the Dow. And as we take a look at this, there's also nothing that's been broken here. I won't go into the details on how this is calculated out there. Uh, this is an A to B equals CD pattern for the Dow coming off of the uh, 2020 low out here. And so nothing has been broken. This suggests over time that the Dow, we should expect the Dow to get up to 47,399. I remember the day and I was back in Clearwater and I did the charts and we took a look at A to B equals CD patterns and so forth. <laughs> and it came up with a 40,000 number. And I got a number of cards and letters saying, you're crazy. Well, we're at 40,000. So there's no reason for us not to get to 47,000, at least 47,000, and finish off that A to B equal CD. Now, this is the chart that's got all of the decorations on it that we just took a look at in case, you know, some people like to take snapshots of the window in Tiger TV or what have you. This chart here for the Dow shows us consecutive, this is a daily time frame chart, consecutive higher and lower closes. The black digits are higher, the red digits are lower. In in a Friday was bar number two of consecutive moves higher. We're trading lower today. That's pretty typical if we are in a bear market that you'd only get two bar rallies. And we can see that since the high that came in, we've had a couple, one, two, three different two bar rallies and then prices move lower. The one thing that I point out about today's chart is uh, we haven't taken out yesterday's high or yesterday, uh, Friday's high or Friday's low out there. So it's not giving us a clear signal of what its next intent is out there. So I just encourage people, try Mastering Probability. I will guide you through this September, this critical time period, because there is going to be, there should be, an excellent trade setup. Is the market going to move higher into September or lower into September? And that should provide a pretty significant return. Fantastic as always. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You bet. Take care. Stay right there, folks.